Hello, my name is Alexandra Cochran, and today I will be presenting on Amish history. Where did the Amish come from, and what were their origins? The Amish roots date back to the Protestant Reformation in Europe in the 16th century. At this time, they had called themselves Anabaptists. This was because they did not believe in baptism like the Christians and Catholics did in Europe at the time. Anabaptists in Europe were threatened for their beliefs over several decades. Nearly 2,500 Anabaptists were burned at the stake, drowned in rivers, starved, and beheaded in public squares for everyone to see. In 1693, a man named Jacob Amon started to grow followers, and he began spreading his Amish beliefs across Europe. This included countries such as Germany, Switzerland, and what we know today as France. Amon, who called himself a Mennonite, held many controversial views. The views caused unrest among the Amish that were living in Switzerland and in Germany at the time. So what were Jacob Amon's beliefs? Well, Amon forbade the trimming of beards and promoted fashionable dress. He believed that dress must be uniform and he forbade any uniqueness or individuality when it came to dress. Everything had to be uniform down to their hats, garments, shoes, and stockings. No one could wear anything with any bright colors or patterns. It was all simple colors, such as blacks, navies. He also advocated for shunning those who were excommunicated from the church. Anyone who did not agree with him and his ideals were shunned. This included public shunning. He also believed that his members were not to attend services in a state church. This meant that his members could only attend services in his churches and not any of the churches in Europe for the Christians or Catholics. His most controversial belief was that any elder who disagreed with the shunning would be excommunicated. This was controversial because many of the Amish at the time held high respect for their elders and they did not agree with shunning, and they did not believe that the elders should be excommunicated from the church. Due to his controversial beliefs, there was a lot of schisms and a disruption in the community. Some of the Mennonites disapproved of Amon's shunning practices. He believed they were way too strict and controversial. He also called for an increase in communion and feet washing. The communion used to be once a year, and he increased it to twice a year. He also began doing feet washings in rivers and streams. They did not approve of this because it was too similar to baptisms that the Christians and Catholics were participating in. The Swiss Mennonites disapproved of these teachings because they came from the New Testament, which they did not agree with. Many of the Anabaptists that were living in Switzerland started stray from his teaching. Amon attempted to reconcile with the Anabaptists, but the shift was already too great. This divide caused the Swiss Swiss Mennonites to leave and become known as the Amish. So how did the Amish come to America? Well, in the 18th century, The Amish immigrated to North America and began settling in Pennsylvania. They chose Pennsylvania because the land was rich and they could farm there. A man named William Penn, who was a Quaker, began encouraging religious groups to immigrate to Pennsylvania and practice what he called a holy experiment. The holy experiment was that people of different religions can live together in peace. And this worked for a while. The Amish liked living in Pennsylvania. 
The very first Amish settlement was in Ole Townships, Berks County, Pennsylvania, in 1714. A group of Amish families came across from Europe and started to settle here in 1714. And the very first ship that contained more Amish families was called the Charming Nancy, and it came to America in 1737. There were 21 Amish families that were aboard this ship who came to Pennsylvania. Throughout the 19th century, more Amish began immigrating from Europe to America, primarily in Pennsylvania. The American Amish, however, were a lot more strict and traditional than the Amish were in Europe. The Americans and Amish still observed shunning very strictly. This caused a lot of disagreements between the new immigrants and those who had been in Pennsylvania for longer. The newer immigrants that were coming to America had become more relaxed in enforcing things such as uniform clothing and technology. They wanted to adapt to it more, where the Amish that were living in Pennsylvania longer did not want to adapt to new technology changes that came about due to the Industrial Revolution. To try to combat this, there were minister meetings that were held to try to restore unity, but tensions only rose. This is where the old, um, old, old Order Amish came from. The tensions among the Amish in America gave birth to the Old Order Amish, which we still know as them today. They held a lot stricter beliefs than the new immigrants that were coming to America. The traditional rules that they followed were known as the Ordnung, which many Amish still practice today. The Ordnung's rules said that clothing should be plain and that technology was forbidden. This is a callback to what Jacob Amon believed, and they were beginning to revert back to his beliefs. The more progressive groups in America were known as Amish Mennonites. The Mennonites started to accept changes in technology and were less strict on uniformity and clothing. There were many changes in technology at this time due to the Industrial Revolution, such as horse and buggies, as well as new farming equipment. The Amish found it hard in the modern world, especially the Ordnung. From the 1900s on, it was much harder for them to assimilate with the modern growing world. Since 1937, the Amish have started to had, have conflicts with the local and state authorities. Beginning in the 1930s was the consolidation of Pennsylvania's public school system. This is when one-room schoolhouses were being shut down. This marks the beginning of what we call the parochial school movement. What was the parochial school movement? Well, school officials were attempting to move Amish children out of their one-room schoolhouses and into public schools with other non-Amish children. The reason that Amish children learned in a one-room schoolhouse was because the Amish believed that the children should stop receiving education in the eighth grade and after that shift to learning traits. Young men in the Amish community would start farming with the other older men in their community and they would also practice woodworking. They would make things such as dressers and beds and other things. The young women, however, would learn how to cook, care for their younger siblings, and they would also learn how to knit, crochet, and quilt. Many of the Amish were upset at the state for forcing their children to go to public schools because it directly violated their religion. The Amish do not believe in higher education and do not let their children learn above an 8th grade education level. The most influential case for the Amish regarding the freedom of religion was the Supreme Court case in 1972 of Yoder v. Wisconsin. In this case, the Supreme Court ruled that the Amish parents can exercise their freedom of religion to educate their children as they seem fit. This means that children could still start learning in public school how in one-room schoolhouses and not have to go to public school. So, how does this relate to the Amish now? Well, over the centuries, the Amish have gone through many changes. We see these in changes of leadership, 
where Jacob Amman was the first real leader of the Amish, and now not. There are also changes in their practices. This includes the Old Order Amish and the Mennonites and how they practice differently. There's also changes in their faith. While the Amish believe in mainly the same things, they still have differences. And also changes in immigration. I bet a lot of people didn't know that the Amish originated in Europe and how they came over to America. The Amish still continue to go through changes today. This is because there have been many new advancements in technology, politics, and hate crimes. A lot of English people do not understand how the Amish live, and a lot of them don't like them for it. A lot of the hate crimes we see today involve horse and buggy and car accidents, where horse and buggies are being run off the road. Thank you for watching. You can email me at cochran.80 at red.edu for any and all questions. And these are my references. Thank you.